Hi, this is Tony Lodig from PhotoProfitSecrets.com and I want to welcome you to another on-site video on how to improve your photography. In this episode, we are going to focus on shooting better waterfalls. Now, waterfalls and moving water, two of my favorite subjects because you've probably seen those photos where you see the water just kind of silky rushing down across the rocks and maybe you've even wondered how they get that effect. Well, in today's episode, that's exactly what I'm going to show you how to do, how to get that effect. But before we get into the actual how-to, there's a couple things that you need to keep in mind whenever you're preparing for a shoot like this. There are some things that you want to put in place from a planning perspective before your actual shoot, but there's also some gear that you're going to want to make sure that you have as well. Now, whenever you identify a potential location where you want to go in and do this type of photography, whether it's a rushing stream or a beautiful set of waterfalls, there's a couple things to keep in mind. First of all, you want to get a map of the trails leading to the waterfall so you have an idea of the kind of hike that you're in for and what the distance is. You also want to know where the location of the falls is in relation to the sun because different times of the day can have a huge effect on how your final pictures turn out. Uh, for instance, if you shoot in the direct noon sun, your pictures are going to appear in many cases washed out, certainly not what you're looking for unless it's overcast. However, in the afternoon or early morning when there's not as much light, your pictures are going to look totally different. As a matter of fact, we're here today at Cunningham Falls in Thermont, Maryland, and I decided to use this uh, set of falls as our test subject since it's near to where I live. And I shot some photos that I'm going to show you here in just a moment uh, of the same falls area where the first set was shot around noontime. The second set was shot around 5 p.m. And the difference between the two shots is startling. The first thing you're going to notice is that the water's washed out looking and very bright uh, because of this direct sun beating down on the water and the reflectivity and everything compared especially to the 5 p.m. shots. But more than that, even the appearance of the rocks and the surrounding trees looks a lot different. And that's just because of how the sun can affect your scene. It's also good to scout out your area so that you have an idea of the best angles or the best locations. In some waterfalls, it may require taking a different trail to get uh, up high to shoot down on a waterfall versus shooting from the ground level. And so, these are the kind of answers that are really helpful for you to understand before you go lugging gear in. Now, speaking of gear, there's a couple things that you want to also bear in mind as you're preparing for this trip when it comes to gear. First of all, you want to make sure that you prepare well for a hike. You want to make sure that you have appropriate footwear like hiking boots or good sturdy sneakers. You also want to make sure that you are carrying your gear in some type of pack or backpack that makes it very easy to uh, trek back on a trail. The waterfalls that I photographed today, I had to actually hike about a mile back on rugged terrain and I was carrying around 65 pounds of gear because I had the video camera that I'm using to tape this, I had my regular camera, multiple lenses, two tripods. It was extremely heavy and challenging, but you don't necessarily have to travel with that much gear, but you want to make sure that you plan ahead. Okay. Also carry water, especially if you're in uh, the summertime like I am right now. It's the beginning of August. You want to make sure that you have plenty of water so that you can stay hydrated. Now, when it comes to camera gear itself, if you are shooting with a digital SLR, I strongly, highly recommend taking a wide angle lens or a wide angle zoom. Now, most of the shots that I shot today that you're going to see in this segment, I actually shot with a Sigma 10 to 20 millimeter ultra wide angle zoom. And because of the zoom, it allowed me to capture a wide area of the surrounding 
uh, falls, the surrounding rocks and trees and all of that, which is in most cases for landscape scenery, the type of shot that you want. Now, in some cases you may want to actually focus in on a small area of the stream where maybe the drop is only a couple inches or something like that. And so in that case, it may be a little more appropriate to have a medium uh, telephoto lens or something of that nature, say in the 50 to 80 millimeter range. But most of the time, you're going to achieve the best results shooting with a wide angle or an ultra wide angle lens. Matter of fact, I would strongly recommend uh, using at least a 28 millimeter lens or uh, broader. Like I said, I was shooting with a 10 to 20 millimeter for most of the shots that you're seeing in this segment. Another thing to bear in mind is how to actually get that effect, okay? And we're going to talk about that next. And the effect that I'm talking about, of course, is where the water just appears to be slowly moving down across the rocks in a nice, uh, soft, cotton-like blur. Well, that's achieved because of another piece of equipment that you want to make sure that you have, and that is a tripod because we're going to be shooting slower shutter speeds to get that effect. It's a, it's a longer exposure so that the motion of the water appears blurred. But in order to get truly sharp, rock solid pictures of the waterfalls, you need to mount your camera on something. There's no way that you can hand hold your camera and achieve this effect and at least have it sharp. And so I strongly recommend getting the best tripod that you can afford. You don't have to go out and buy a three or four hundred dollar carbon fiber one, but I strongly recommend buying the best tripod that you can afford. Now the tripod that I use today, uh, it's a ball head and I like it a lot because it gives me a lot of flexibility, but the standard platform tripods work equally as well. So once you have your gear, your tripod, your camera, your wide angle lenses, you want to make sure that you have plenty of blank cards that fit your camera. You want to make sure that you also have fully charged batteries along with backups so that you don't hike back to the waterfall and shoot off five shots and all of a sudden you're out of card space or you're out of batteries or something like that because it's going to be extremely difficult to recharge those batteries when you're out in the middle of the wilderness. Okay, so you want to make sure that those little things are also taken care of in advance. Now, once you get to the location where you're going to be shooting your waterfall pictures, it's extremely important to frame out a number of different shots. Matter of fact, I recommend looking at the waterfalls, especially depending on their height, from as many different angles as you can, um, both close up and far back. But the thing that you want to keep in mind is once you get your camera mounted, what I strongly recommend if your camera allows this is to shoot in aperture priority mode. What that means is that it enables you to select the aperture on your lens and then the camera itself determines what the correct shutter speed is. The reason why this is important is because when shooting a shot like this, you want to close your aperture down to the smallest setting possible. In many cases, that's F22 or F32. The next thing that you'll want to do, especially if you're shooting in the middle of the day, is to choose the lowest ISO setting for your camera that you can. And on a lot of cameras that is usually ISO 100, which is very comparable to ASA 100 film if you're familiar with the film days and shooting with uh, film SLRs. So once you have your camera setting set to ISO 100 or lower, and you have your aperture set to f22 or higher depending on what the highest setting is the camera will determine the shutter speed and depending on the brightness of the day that shutter speed could range anywhere from a half a second to perhaps even a couple seconds which is exactly what we want because as that shutter speed slows down and the camera is mounted on your tripod everything that isn't moving remains sharp which is a good thing, and everything that is moving, which is the water, blurs, which gives us that smooth silk effect. And so whenever you shoot your shot, keep that in mind. Now, there's one last thing that I want to mention here, and that is triggering your shot so that your finger don't 
shake the camera while it's on the tripod. Normally, whenever we take a picture, we hold the camera up to our face and we push the shutter down part way. Well, just pushing that shutter down can provide enough movement to prevent your images from being the sharpest that they could be. So you have two options to consider whenever you are ready to shoot your photo. The first option, which is the one that I use today, is to just use the bulb setting or a timer setting that comes with most cameras, including point and shoots. And so the particular setting that I chose gave me a two second delay where it would count down that two seconds and then the camera would automatically snap the shot. So it gave me plenty of time to frame up my shot push the button down part way to make sure it was in focus and then release the shutter and then take my hands off. The camera beeped for two seconds and then snapped the shot, which in many cases today was about a second and a half exposure. And so that way I wasn't touching the camera at all whenever the shot was taken and the sharpness that I wanted from the surrounding area of the waterfalls was definitely there. It was definitely sharp. The other approach that you can take is by using a cable release. And I have one of those as well, but I didn't use it today. And the cable release, uh, which is available for many cameras, simp simply plugs into the camera and then gives you the ability e either wired or wirelessly to trigger the camera that way. Now, there are wireless transmitters that allow you to remotely fire your camera. And in some cases that can be an option for you, although it's a more expensive option, the cheapest option is to use the timer settings on your camera as they are. The next option would be to use a cable release. That way you can stand right beside your camera and trigger it without ever having touched it at all. So when we put it all together, we end up getting the shots that we're after. And you can see here in the different video clips that I'm showing you how the falls appear. Now these videos were shot during the noontime sun. So you can see how burned out the water looks compared to the final photographs that I shot that I actually took much later in the day, around 5 p.m. and it was partly overcast by then. So you can see how much different it looks. The colors are much more brilliant and everything just had a much more appealing tone and so I strongly recommend that you try to avoid having the water in the direct sunlight if at all possible because you can see even in the video here how burnt out and blown out it is compared to the final photograph that I was able to shoot and so also explore multiple angles sometimes you might think an angle will look great and it just won't and I'm not always a big fan of shooting head-on but with this particular waterfall, it worked out extremely well, as you'll see here in the photograph. So as you're working through your waterfall area, looking for those shots, you may occasionally encounter people who have a different idea for waterfalls than what you do. And so you'll just have to learn to work around them and enjoy it as well. So as you do this yourself, you will end up with some great results that will impress your friends and family and add some great landscape photographs that you'll be proud of for years to come. So this is Tony Lottig from PhotoProfitSecrets.com and I'll see you in the next video. you're going to end up with some results that will dazzle your friends and wow your, I don't know. <laughs> so this is Tony Lottig from PhotoProfitSecrets.com. I hope you found this hat. So this is Tony Lottig. You think I'd get my own name right?